In this video, we're going to take a look at how to import a file into SQL Server. So, first of all, we've got SSMS launched. We're going to go ahead and connect. And the table we're going to be targeting is actually in our IOCHAMP sample database. If we look at tables and its customers. So let's just look quickly at the columns here in customers. We have a customer ID, company name, first name, last name, and an active status. Now, if we do a design on this table, we'll see that the customer ID is the primary key uh, and it is a auto incrementing number down here, so it is the identity field. So we will not need to insert any data there. And the active field is a bit, so basically one or zero, and it's active by default. So we're essentially going to be bringing in three fields, company name, first name, and last name. We have a sample Excel file here that has those columns, company name, first name, and last name. This could be something that you built uh, in Excel. It can come from an export from another system. Um, there's various data sources, but um, essentially if you can get this into Excel or into a flat file, we can then import that into SQL. So um, let's save this as a flat file. So file, save as, and we are going to change this to CSV. And we'll just leave the file name as companies to import. Save that. All right, close the file out. Now back over to SQL Server. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go up to the database, right click, tasks, import data. It'll bring up the data wizard dialog box. We'll just click next. First thing we'll need to do is to choose our data source. So a lot of data sources in the list, but we're looking for flat file source. Then we'll select our file, and I already have a shortcut copied to the folder that the file is in. Now you may have to change the uh, file type select over here to CSV or all files, and then look for the comma separated file. So here we go, companies to import, open. Now one thing worth noting here is um, sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error. You can avoid some of that if you define the column types at the first part of the import. So essentially, a couple things to look for. Are the column names in the first row of data? So yes, they are. And then we go to columns here, and you'll see that we have our three columns listed. It is comma separated. Data looks good. Then if we go to advanced, so essentially it's going to give you the columns and the different data types it's going to import as. So by default, when you're importing a flat file, it's going to bring everything as a, as a string value with an output width of 50. If we had a company name that was longer than 50 characters, for example, this would actually throw a truncation error when we tried to do the import. So what I like to do usually is have the table open on the left so I can see the data types that we're targeting. So um, for all of these, we're gonna basically change this field to 100 so that it matches the target type. All right, so next. And then we'll choose our destination. So we're going into SQL Server. It's usually at the bottom of the list. Uh, this is our server instance, and then any authentication that you need. We're using Windows Authentication, but if you're using SQL Authentication, you could click that and then put in the username and password. So Windows Authentication, and then the database that we're targeting. Next. All right, so you've got your source on the left and your target on the right. Now, by default, it's going to want to create a table that's the same name as the file that you're importing. But we're going to drop this list down here, and we're going to choose Customers. So we're targeting that table. And then let's go down and do Edit Mappings. And I just like to look at this just to make sure that the columns line up. Um, if our naming was different in the file, header row from the database table, these would probably not match up and you'd have to come through and just sort of select which goes to which, but uh, everything looks good here. We're just going to append rows. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then walk through the wizard. Next. We're going to choose to run the package immediately. Next. And then finish. You'll get to see the progress. Now, if there is any error during the import, you will get some error messages here, but this all looks good. We see that 15 rows were transferred, so we'll close this out. 
and we'll just query the tail to see if our rows actually came in. Next star from customers. Execute. And there you have it. All of the data from the flat file came in. Fields lined up correctly. So we now have our data imported into SQL Server from a flat file.